Casey Jones Distillery, located just on the outskirts of Hopkinsville, stands tall as a staple of Christian County. But it's the family history found at this small craft distillery that's at the heart of their story. Western Kentucky and the land between the lakes were booming areas for moonshining during Prohibition. But to get to the good stuff, you needed a still to make it with. At the time, one still maker stood out above all, the namesake of this distillery, Casey Jones. I was hired at the old Paducah Sun Democrat in 1976. So I was naturally inclined toward history and folklore. And one of the things that fascinated me was moonshining between the rivers. And so I interviewed a series of people involved in that. One was a man named Reg Nickel. Then Reg said, you need to interview John Bays, who was a revenuer, federal uh, ATF agent. And that's how I got on to Casey Jones. I uh, got one of our photographers, Barkley Tillman, in, in the car we drove over to Aurora, where we are now. Uh, and he lived in a little trailer just at the edge of town here. So Barkley and I got out of the car. He was in the yard. I said, well, I'm looking for Casey Jones, the guy who made all the moonshine stills between the rivers. He didn't say anything. And I said, well, I'm sorry if you're not Casey Jones, but John Bays told me I needed to find Casey Jones and talk to him about making stills. Well, he smiled and said, well, if John sent you, I'll talk to you. Casey started in the late 30s making stills, making moonshine, quickly, quickly became known as a still maker. The first time he got caught, he spent a year in West Virginia and, and he turned around and got caught again. First time was with stuff to make a still. Second time was making a still plus the moonshine product. So he got two years that time for it. And that was when he decided to quit making stills. And that was in 1950. So he had a pretty good career over 20 years there of doing still making moonshining before he got caught. He made his first still without ever seeing a still. Interestingly enough, after he, his career at making full-size stills like the one behind me ended, he then turned to making miniature stills, and they are absolutely works of art. They are correct in every detail. You could probably run, run moonshine in them. So Casey used all copper in his stills. Uh, his design with the what you call a square pot or coffin style or wagon bed still became known because of how many he built, but the design of them, they were a low profile still and they actually heated up quicker than most stills and the heat was spread more evenly so it didn't scorch the product in it. And then the other part was the condenser. He actually created what we call a condenser, which is used in modern stills today, but they weren't used back then. Back then, they used a, what they call a copper worm. Casey came up with the idea to create copper sleeves. So one sleeve on the inside and one sleeve on the outside, a little bit bigger, and the copper surface on that sleeve would touch so much more water, so it would cool so much more efficient. So that allowed his stills to run and produce product at a gallon every three and a half to four minutes. So that became a very fast operating still. So if you were doing it illegal, like Casey, that's what you wanted to be able to do was get in, fire up your still, and, and then pack it out. The other thing was his stills had all had handles on them. So you could actually take it and move it and move it in the back of the truck, back of a wagon. That's the reason why some people call it a wagon bed still. So it's very easy to operate and very easy to use. And we ended up with the last still he ever built, which was commissioned by the federal government to be built in 1967. Many folks might have seen that still on display at the visitor center at Land Between the Lakes. Well, in 2007, 40 years after it was built, the Forest Service took over, the visitor center needed remodeling and the still came out. AJ found out about it, and about a year later, one day, the head of the Forest Service called. I took the call, wondered if I maybe shouldn't have, but they told AJ that he could have that still if he would like to come and get it. And so that drive that's usually 40 minutes took about 15 minutes, and we went and we got this still, and that's how we got into the distillery business out of another lifelong business uh, we had that had nothing to do related with the word distillery. Casey Jones Distillery is the premier small, tiny craft distillery in Western Kentucky with tremendous family history. 
We have a grandson and a fifth generation grandson working here. Casey Jones's legacy with respect to the distillery is, is apparent in everything that we do. I mean, AJ, our master distiller, he's actually the third and yet first legal distiller from the Jones line. Uh, and that's a tradition that actually spans over 100 years. I mean, you think it's, we're in the 2020s now. Well, uh, Casey was still building during Prohibition, and that's 100 years ago. Growing up with my grandfather and my dad and, and hearing all the stories and the things that went on with the, the moonshining and I actually worked out construction with my grandfather quite a bit, so he taught me a lot of things, that how to do things. and. At that time, it was sharpened hand saws, things like that. I'd hear little stories, but it was just really intriguing to, to actually get in there and do this, you know. My great-great-grandfather, I actually didn't get to know him. So it's, uh, it's basically it's going off what I know and what I've been told. And obviously, I'm fifth generation. Uh, he's, a, he's a troublemaker, basically. He gets in a lot of trouble. Uh, I enjoy going on with his legacy, doing his work. Uh, maybe one day I'll get to do make my own still. Everybody, I'm Chip Holston and I am cherishing this Kentucky life. And if you enjoyed that story and would like to see more, click right here to see more.